This is an educational podcast or educast created by Jim House, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and Communication Arts Technology at Allegheny College of Maryland. For more information about Allegheny College of Maryland, please visit us on the web at allegheny.edu. File management encompasses any procedure that helps you organize your computer-based files so that you can find and use them more efficiently. Depending on your computer's operating system, you can organize and manipulate your files from within an application program or by using a special file management utility the operating system provides. This podcast offers an overview of application-based and operating system-based file management. Applications, such as a word processing software or graphics software, typically provide a way to open files and save them in a specific folder on a designated storage device. An application might also have additional file management capabilities such as deleting, copying, and renaming files. Suppose you want to write a letter to the editor of your local newspaper about the rising tide of graffiti in your neighborhood. You'd open your word processing software and type the document. As you type, the document is held in RAM. At some point, you'll want to save that document. To do so, you click File on the menu bar and then select the Save As option. The Save As dialog box opens and allows you to specify a name of the file and its location on your computer storage devices. Most operating systems provide file management utilities that give you the big picture of the files you've stored on your disks and help you work with them. For example, Windows provides a file management utility that can be accessed from the My Computer icon or from the Windows Explorer option on the Start menu. On computers with Mac OS, the file management utility is called the Finder. These utilities help you view a list of files, find files, move files from one place to the other, make copies of files, delete files, and discover file properties and rename files. File management utilities often use some sort of storage metaphor to help you visualize and mentally organize the files on your disks and other storage devices. These metaphors are also called logical storage models because they are supposed to help you form a mental or logical picture of the way in which files are stored. As an example of a file management utility, take a closer look at Windows Explorer, a utility program bundled with the Windows operating system and designed to help you organize and manipulate the files you stored on your computer. The Windows Explorer window is divided into two window panes. The pane on the left side of the window lists each of the storage devices connected to your computer, plus several important system objects such as my computer, my network places, and the desktop. An icon for a storage device or other system object can be expanded by clicking its corresponding plus sign icon. Expanding an icon displays the next level of the storage hierarchy, usually a collection of folders. A device icon or folder can be opened by clicking directly on the icon rather than on the plus sign. Once an icon is opened, its contents appear in the pane on the right side of the Windows Explorer window. In addition to locating files and folders, Windows Explorer provides a set of procedures that help you manipulate files and folders in the following ways. For example, rename. You might want to change the name of the file or folder to better describe its contents. Copy. You can copy a file from one device to another. For example, from a floppy disk in drive A to the hard disk in drive C. You can also make a copy of a document so that you can revise a copy and leave the original intact. Move. You can move a file from one folder to another or from one storage device to another. When you move a file, it's erased from the original location, so make sure you remember the new location of the file. You can also move folders from one storage device to another or move them to a different folder. Delete. You can delete a file when you no longer need it. You can also delete a folder. Be careful when you delete a folder because most file management utilities also delete all of the files within the folder. File Management Utility provides tools and procedures to help you keep track of your program and data files. But these tools are most useful when you have a logical plan for organizing your files and when you follow some basic file management guidelines. The following tips pertain to managing files on your computer. Use descriptive names. Give your files and folders descriptive names and avoid using cryptic abbreviations. Maintain file extensions. When renaming a file, keep the original file extension so you can easily open it with the correct application software. Group similar files. Separate files into folders based on subject matter. For example, store your creative writing assignments in one folder and your MP3 music files in another. Organize your folders from the top down. When devising a hierarchy of folders, consider how you want to access files and back them up. For example, it's easy to specify one folder and its subfolders for backup. If your important data is scattered in a variety of folders, however, making backups is more time consuming. Consider using the My Document default directory. Windows software typically defaults to the My Documents folder for storing data files. You might want to use My Documents as your main data folder and subfolders as necessary to organize your files. Don't mix data files and program files. Don't store data files in the same folders that hold your software. On Windows systems, most software is stored in some folders of the Program Files folder. No files in the root directory. Although it's acceptable to create folders in the root directory, it's not a good practice to store programs or data files in the root directory of a computer's hard disk. Access files from the hard disk. For best performance, copy files from floppy disks or CDs to your computer's hard disk before accessing them. 
Follow copyright rules. When copying files, make sure you adhere to copyright and license restrictions. Delete files you no longer need. Deleting unneeded files and folders helps keep your list from growing to an unmanageable size. Be aware of storage locations. When you save files, make sure the drive letter and folder name specify the correct storage location. Backup. Back up your folders regularly. The physical storage model describes what actually happens on disks and in the circuits. Before a computer can store a file on a disk, CD, or DVD, the storage media must be formatted. The formatting process creates the equivalent of electronic storage bins by dividing the disk into tracks and then further subdividing each track into sectors. Tracks and sectors are numbered to provide addresses for each storage bin. The numbering scheme depends on the storage device and the operating system. Today, most floppy, zip, and hard disks are pre-formatted at the factory. However, computer operating systems provide formatting utilities you can use to reformat some storage devices. The operating system uses a file system to keep track of the names and the locations of files that reside on a storage medium, such as a hard disk. Most versions of Mac OS use the Macintosh Hierarchical File System, or HFS. X2FS Extended 2 File System is a native file system for Linux. Windows NT, Windows 2000, and Windows XP use a system called NTFS, or New Technology File System. The file system for Windows 3.1 was called FAT16. Windows 95, 98, and ME use a system called FAT32. To speed up the process of storing and retrieving data, a disk drive usually works with a group of sectors called a cluster, or a block. The number of sectors that form a cluster varies depending on the capacity of the disk and the way the operating system works with the files. If your computer uses the FAT32 file system, for example, this index file is called the File Allocation Table, or FAT. If your computer uses NTFS, it's called the Master File Table, or MFT. To delete a file from a disk in such a way that no one can ever read it, you can use a special file shredder software that overwrites empty sectors with random ones and zeros. As a computer writes files on a disk, parts of the files tend to become scattered all over the disk. These fragmented files are stored in non-contiguous clusters. Drive deformance generally declines as rewrite heads have to move back and forth and locate the clusters containing parts of the file. To regain peak performance, you can use a defragmentation utility to rearrange the files on the disk so that they are stored in contiguous clusters. This has been an Educast podcast brought to you by Jim House and Allegheny College of Maryland.